Welcome back to the Phyllis Schlafly Collegian Summit. We have the great privilege of being joined now uh, from Europe, uh, our friend Dominic Tarzinski. Dominic Tarzinski is now currently a member of the European Parliament. Uh, he was, when he first came to our attention and became a, a friend of our efforts, he came to the United States. He was a member of one of the houses of uh, the Parliament in, uh, in Poland, and now he's in the European uh, Parliament. Uh, fascinating career. He's a, As a young man, he... Uh, one of the values, I think, valuable things he did was he lived in, in England as a, a young man and, and business and learned English perfectly. So he sounds uh, like at least not an American, but he sounds like a, an English speaker and now serves. Um, and so uh, uh, and so welcome, Dominic Tarzinski. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening uh, from Brussels, from oh, the okay. heart of democracy, as they say, <laughs> from the European <laughs> Parliament. Yeah, so right. I'd like, to, I'd like to give you a few words about this temple of democracy, as they call it. Some, yeah. some people call it temple of democracy. Uh, well, my English is not that perfect. It's not that good, but good enough to, to give you my story and to give you the, the, the current events description here in Europe. So, Dominic, uh, first, um, as a young student, as a young man, you, you took chances. Uh, you know, we're talking to our college students, and you took chances. You were you started your own business. You were for a while. You were running a tourism business uh, out of Poland to various places. You moved to uh, London. You know, I, I would say for you, you ran for office. Taking risks, taking smart risks, is something that you've. Uh, accomplished as as a part of who you are. Uh, talk a little bit about that for young people coming into the world, college students, that seems uncertain, right? There's war in, in uh, Russia and Ukraine. There's uh, economic uncertainty. There's people trying to say, if you're Poland, uh, act like us. We want you to be like uh, Europe. If you're if you're America, uh, inside America, we have people saying, you know, act like communists, it feels like. But as a young man, you took risks and, and it became something you understood. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I'd like to give you a, a short introduction, a background of my family and myself and my story. I'm I, I, coming from a very poor family. Um, that one of the reasons of, of this was that my, my grandpa father, he fought against, um, against Germans during the Second World War. And then after uh, World War II, he joined the underground army and he didn't stop his war against new occupation, against uh, communists, Soviets. Um, not many people uh, are aware that uh, uh, the, the, the World War II started on 1st of September 1939. 1st of September 1939. 16 days later, on 7 later, seven, 16 days later, on 17th of September, the same year, 1939, 16 days later, Russians attacked Poland from east. So we had two occupations. Uh, unfortunately, Germans are focused on, uh, the uh, historians are, are focused on Germans only, but, but we had actually two aggressors. We've been attacked from, from east and from the west. So after the end of the uh, World War, uh, the, uh, the communists uh, try, were trying to take over Poland, so, so my grandpa decided to go to the forest, and he, 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 he decided to continue his war against uh, Soviet's communist regime, basically. Uh, so um, he was chased for, for many years until 1969. So for many people, World War II did not end uh, in, in, in 1945. So after that, uh, you have to remember that Poland was under the Soviet occupation. Um, so this, this occupation ended when uh, St. John Paul II, with President Reagan, decided to free Europe and the world from the communism. The Iron Curtain falls and, and Poland started new life. So to be honest, our freedom started in 1989, not in 1945. So during the communism, because of the past, my, my, my grandfather passed, everyone knew who he was, communists knew, the Poland was under a, a huge pressure. We, we were, that, was, that was the occupation, actually. So my family was very poor. Uh, my grandpa couldn't find a job. Then my, my mom couldn't finish her studies, uh, her college, obviously, because she was a, a daughter 
of outcast right. soldier, as they were called. So we had a hard time, and that was the, one of the reasons for me to uh, to graduate, to, to get to the college and, and graduate with the law to become a prosecutor. Because in my mind, when I was like a teenager, I thought, okay, I'll become a prosecutor, and I'll put all these bad communists in jail <laughs> for what right. they have done to my family. Right. Then I graduated with the uh, Catholic University of uh, Lublin, John Paul II Catholic University, and I found out that all these prosecutors should be in jail, not put <laughs> people in jail. Right. So I decided, okay, if the prosecutors are so corrupted, then I have to be above them in some ways. So I decided that politics is in some way the legacy and continuation of this fight from my grandfather. So, so I decided to join politics. I, I decided to join the Republican Party, a conservative party in, uh, in Poland. Uh, I served two terms in the Polish parliament, national parliament, and then I, I was elected to the European parliament. To explain it to you, because the system is here in Europe is a little bit different than in America. Yeah. We have national parliaments, like every country. It's uh, European Union is 27 countries, Poland, Germany, and many others. Uh, and we have our own national parliaments, but let's say above all the national parliaments, we have parliament here in Brussels. So I, I can say I'm a congressman for Europe, yeah. basically, because we we representing the whole <laughs> the whole Europe. So that is the nutshell. That's the the very short story. But obviously, yeah. obviously this this path and this journey to be here to talk to you as a member of the European Parliament wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy at all. But what helped me, first of all, was a prayer. And I must say, I must admit, I prayed a lot for it, for, for what I do now and to be here and to serve my country. And the second was I was not afraid to fall. I was mm -hmm. not afraid of, of, uh, of many mistakes. Right. I was, I was not elected, actually. When I started, uh, I, ru I, I, I run once, nothing. I run twice, second time, nothing. And I was like, you know, people were like laughing at me and I said, <laughs> okay, that's, that's just the beginning. Okay. Right. So, yeah. so I, I did not quit. It was hard. So, so I decided to run third time and I was elected with a small support, but, but I was elected the second election. I won again. So I was elected. I, I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm a really a congressman for Poland now right. because the, the amount of, of, of the votes was impressive. And then uh, I, I, I decided to run for the European Parliament and I was elected again with it like triple number with, with the votes. So that was that gave me a confidence. And I will tell you, I cannot tell you what it is, but I can tell you this is the middle of my journey. It's going to be big. It's going to be very big. Dominic Tarzinski is our guest and you can follow him on Twitter and other places. Uh, he's very prominent in the community. Uh, from Poland because he's such a good communicator. We should, I should drop a footnote, Dominic. In the midst of your career, you actually were a documentary filmmaker and a filmmaker, and you you honed your skills, I would say, as a communicator, which, again, is another lesson. If you if you want to succeed in, uh, we tell our college students, if you want to succeed in politics or business, in teaching or social work, in religious ministry, or in... Uh, in your own family, learning to communicate is important. Now, Dominic, um, the topic for our, our talk, Collegians, a theme for our Phyllis Schlafly uh, Eagles Collegian Summit. Oh, let me pause. Uh, Phyllis Schlafly herself, the late Phyllis Schlafly, she ran for uh, office twice, and she lost both times. And she, says to, she said to people uh, to the end of her life, when you run and lose, you learn how it works. That's how, right. How, when you run and sure. yeah, when you run and win, you think you're a genius. When you run and lose, you learn how it works. So she also, uh, but but our theme is the power of patriotism, the power of patriotism. Now I've heard you speak about the Polish nation that survived even when the map said there was yeah, no 20, Poland. Yeah, yeah, we've been, we, we've been partitioned, because of the partitions, there was no Poland on the map for, on the map for 123 years. Wow. 123 <laughs> years of non-existence. Right. We never existed for, for <laughs> over a century. So, yeah, for, for, for the Poles, uh, the, 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 the most important, the, the, the fundament of, of, of survival for all these years was a church. 
I must say that Christianity, our culture, uh, people had this place, I mean church, to be together, to speak in Polish, not Russian or German. The, the, the partitions were Germans and Russians mainly throughout the history. And th the church helped us to survive, to, to be a community, to, to communicate, to understand that, that we are not lost yet. So we get our independence back in 1918. And this is when uh, the whole journey started. So in 1918, we get our independence back, but in 1920, Russians attack again. So Bolsheviks, and we have, we've won. We won this battle, uh, which, which is one of the most important battles in the European history, because the Bolsheviks tried to take over the whole Europe. So our army saved Europe, then, unfortunately, in 1939, Germans with Russians attacked again. After 1945, Iron Curtain was built, and obviously Poland was under the Russian influence up till 1989. And since uh, John Paul II and President Reagan, I must say, um, I must repeat this, uh, because this is very important, decided to do something about Europe and to fight communism uh, and to defend church and to defend... Uh, family values and uh, to defend normality, basically, uh, Poland had a chance to grow. So at the moment, um, Poland is not about uh, Polish jokes anymore. No one is joking <laughs> about Poland. No. <clears throat> I tell you why. Because our unemployment rate is the lowest in European Union, 2.7. This is our unemployment rate. There's no unemployment in Poland, basically. Number two, Polish GBT is the highest in European Union. Public debt, 46%. Eurozone, I mean, zone uh, countries which decided to take euro as a currency, is 96%. Wow. And then safety. Poland is the only country in Europe where there was no terrorist attack. None. And the reason is very simple. We decided not to take any of illegal migrants uh, into Poland. So zero is the number which I love. I love my zero. <laughs> so we have very simple policy, very, very strict but I, again, I, I, at the same I, time, everyone is free to, yeah. to experience life. I, you can I, travel. And I want to go to I want to go to the migrant question in a moment. But I want to go back for one second to patriotism. I, I've heard again you talk. I was there in nineteen in twenty eighteen celebrating the hundredth anniversary, and it's it's a priority in the community, in elected officials, but also in everyone's life to be Polish together. To to be there is a priority for patriotism that unites everyone, even if you disagree with politics, I think there's a, un a unity. Is that threatened by the modern forces in America? We see it in America a lot, I think, in the European Union. How do you balance that? Well, uh, this is a very serious question and, uh, and very important question. But let me answer in a little bit of funny way. Uh, try to imagine that you decide to quit Coke, burgers, steaks, and soda okay. for two or three months. Let's say 12 months. Okay. Try to imagine 123 months you're quitting. You love it or whatever you like, music <laughs> or whatever you like. And then you, after 123 months, you can have it. You love it. You cherish what you love, music, films, whatever you, so you can- 123, 123 years, and didn't you mean- That, is, that is great, but I'm trying to okay. compare it to okay. 123 right. months of, let's say, quitting of okay. what okay. you love. Okay, all right. Obviously, it's a bit childish, childish to, to compare it, but right. I'm trying to tell you that when you lose what you love, then you understand how you have to take care of it, uh -huh. cherish it, be happy about it, celebrate it, for us, for the country which has experienced, uh, you know, Poland is over a thousand years of history, right? Right. Uh, the, 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 the baptism of our, of our country was in 966, 966. <laughs> right. So Poland is over a thousand years history country. And right. throughout the ages, <clears throat> we had all this bad experience for, um, for so many years that we do understand what it means to lose freedom, to lose our country, to lose what we love. We truly understand what this terrible experience means. 
Our families were killed, raped, kidnapped, and many other things, really bad things happened. So now, as we can celebrate our freedom, it's not about balloons, it's not about funky music, it's about understanding that we can celebrate freedom. And this is not sadness. Balloons are great, but you have to understand what you celebrate. Obviously, you have completely different experience. U.S. has a different experience. You did not experience war on your territory, apart from war, like September 11 and other attacks. But we've been occupied for 70 years. It's completely different. Right. <clears throat> so for us, patriotism is the sense of being Polish. It's not, it's not only food. Obviously, the food and the culture is very important. But it's not about pierogi. <laughs> it's about to understand who you are. Yeah. Who was your grand grandfather, grand grandfather? What is your what is your what is your who who are your ancestors and what what you have to give and bring to Europe, to the world. So so that's why we are so happy and so proud to say, okay, we Poles changed the world. Copernicus was Polish. Uh, John Paul II was Polish. Uh, 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 Chopin was Polish. Uh, so we changed the world through history, science, and, Stan, and, and, Stan, and we Stan, are proud Stan, of it. Stan Musial, the greatest baseball player in America, was Polish, of course. But anyway, that is, that is correct. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going <laughs> to mention Gretzky. I'm not going to say that. I don't know uh, if you have any hockey fans. On <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. All right, real quickly, Dominic, we're at the end here. Uh, the migrant question in Europe: You have a situation where the European Union tries to tell nations how they should manage their immigration policy. And I've talked to you about this before I've been there. Uh, uh, Poland has plenty of workers who come to the country from other nations, but legally. they can only, only yeah, legally. legally, only legally and only with a permit so that, that you can say who comes. You, you don't say, oh, there's an Al-Qaeda unit that wants to apply and come work. Uh -huh. You say, no, we don't take it. Describe for me both the policy you have and how it reflects the will of the people as opposed to the will of either the European Union or uh, the media or the, 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 the university? To be very straight and very frank and 100% honest, this is war. This is war of civilizations. So we have two views. One view is the leftism view, like leftist politician who thinks, okay, let's open the borders, world without borders, everyone is free, everyone can do whatever he wants, we love everyone, all this rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> so they let, they let millions to Europe, as you know, uh, Angela Merkel <clears throat> started this madness, Germany started this madness when they were looking for cheap labor, and this is one of the reasons why, why so many terrorist attacks happened in, in, uh, in Germany, Sweden, France, and other countries. And very, I'm very proud to say that there was not not even one terrorist uh, zero, zero. attack in in Poland. Zero. Zero. <laughs> that, that, I love my zero. I keep repeating it. Like, I love my zero because this is a great policy. Everyone can come. Everyone is welcome. We are not North Korea. Everyone can leave and come and visit. And uh, you visited. You you yeah. saw how yeah. safe, clean, and beautiful Poland is. How 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 much how, how many how many changes happened in Poland, but we do not know anyone, we do not want anyone who is not checked. We need a criminal back check. We need to know who you are, what do you want to do? You need to get your visa. You can stay here for like three or six months and then you have to go. Unless you're going to apply for a citizenship, everyone is allowed to do so. But to do so, you are required to behave in a, in a very proper way. You're checked, but uh, everyone is welcome. So, so our policy is very strict, zero illegal migrants, if you want to be a asylum seeker, you can apply. We don't mind. We are very open. As I said, we are not North Korea, but we do not share this view, uh, European uh, view that everyone is welcome without documents or with five passports on them. So it's very, very simple. But to, 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 um, to invite you, your students, you are very welcome. I answer every, every message on my Twitter account. You can call me. You can email me. Uh, you know, we can have a, a longer chat yeah. about Poland and Europe. You are very welcome to visit me here in in the European Parliament. We have groups coming here, so who knows? Maybe one day okay. we can have a, well, so, shake well, hands. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll see you again soon, Dominic Tarzinski. 
Thank you for your time. We could have Thank this conversation go on a lot longer. I, my encouragement to our collegians is in Europe, there is a vibrancy and energy coming out of Poland, both entrepreneurial, political, making uh, intellectual argument about the tradition that is very successful and powerful and worth real study and understanding because it's not just that, Germany and France. That's why I just want to say, be proud who you are. Yeah. Do not, do not, you know, be proud and do not afraid of mistakes. Try, mm. try, try. Very good. All very right. Good. Dominic Tarzinski, thank you very much. Uh, thank awesome. You. Uh, we will uh, take it. I'll put up on social media links to his uh, information. He does answer his direct messages uh, uh, religiously. It's incredible. So uh, middle of the night, I'll get a, a text back. So uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. 